Hello everybody, welcome to another Tech Tips Tuesday. Today I was going to discuss something that was brought up, uh, I don't remember if it was on Facebook or YouTube, but I was asked explicitly to talk about transformers. So today we're going to talk about the first of the two types, which would be the power transformer. So as you can see, I've got right in front of me here, I just pulled up a, a just kind of a random one that I knew would have a few tubes that would be useful here. It was just a random basement AB165, um, but uh, in this case it has a total of one, two, three, four, five tubes, and I'll tell you why that's five. The, these triodes are the typical dual triodes, so that the 7025 has two in one envelope, uh, but for, for this amp they're only using a half of one. But we'll go ahead and do this calculating as if it was all a fully 7025, a 1287 and then two 6L6s. Uh, but 7025 are not really made anymore, and they're, as far as I understand it, they were a more robust version of a 12AX7 anyway, so they can directly be replaced with a 12AX7 with no circuit change required. Um, and so effectively, um, the the next thing we're going to kind of do is to, to do this correctly you need to do some math and I've got a spreadsheet where I kind of did all of the math and we'll talk it over in a minute and I'll show it to you but the the effective idea here though is all you have to do is look at these data sheets so 12AX7 has a total of 0.3 amps of heater current it says right there at the beginning um, and the reason we're choosing that one of the two we've got series and parallel is if you run these at 12.6 volts so you do some kind of uh, work to um, change your 6.3 volt heaters into a voltage doubler and to DC or something then you could run them with a lower current rating because they're at their voltage but if you don't and most people don't they just run them at the 6.3 volts they run at 0.3 amps uh, it's usually not that big of a deal in these cases most people are fine with that and so that's the way that most guitar amps are built the other value you want to look at for these preamp tubes is the plate current under characteristics of typical operation which would be about 1.2 now that's just average plate current but it can go higher so it can't hurt to give yourself some fudge factor here let's just call it 2 for example we can also double check with the 12AT7 it has the same values 0.3 amps for the 6.3 parallel but it does have um, listed for its plate current a little higher 10 milliamps instead of the what was the, the other one we just said 1.2 so it runs a little bit more current um, in this tube so that gives you another data point that we're going to plug into that spreadsheet, which we'll look at in a second. Finally, and more importantly, the, the beasts that pull the most are the power tubes. The plate current is, instead of 0.3, up to almost a full amp, 0.9 amps per tube. Then we add into that, one of the more important parts is you have to look at your characteristics of the particular amp. And in this case, I know that a basement like that is a class AB1 uh, amplifier. And so you look at that and we have two important values here, maximum signal plate current and maximum signal screen current. So the screen is also drawing a decent amount of current in those tubes. Uh, we could look at zero signal, but that means that we're not taking account heavy use and we would be undershooting. So it's always safer to choose that maximum signal plate current, what you would expect to be before the tubes are starting to go dead. So um, 210 milliamps for that plus 22 milliamps for the screen comes to 232. But again, because we're like I said, rounding up, we'll round that up to 230 or 240. Why am I rounding up? Well, in almost every engineering decision I've ever been taught in life, you always just generally assume that you have, you've designed for the 80% of use, and really you want to give it another 20% safety margin. So everything is really that you get your exact values, but because you assume that there's some things that you can't account for, always add an additional 20% safety margin to whatever you're designing. So, and we'll look at that now on the spreadsheet. Uh, we've got those tubes, we've got the, their plate current and heater current listed out, and you can see those add up, uh, Just they're simple sum, it's just adding those all up, just the sum of the, the, the values. We get 3 amps on the heater, and we have point f almost 0.5 amps on the main output. So you can see the heaters are drawing significantly more. Now the, this number below was me just doing the math of taking the value times 0.2 or 20% and adding it back in so we add that 20% margin in and you can see this jumps up to 3.6 and that up to 0.59 or almost 600 so again because of engineering design that means that's a value but we don't usually just settle with that as well we round up to a nice even number to make it look nice and to guarantee extra breathing room in case so uh, in this case 600 milliamps you could even go 650 and then you have about 3.6 amps let's round that to 4 looks like my dogs decided to come up and join me so that's one of the major considerations. These other numbers we'll talk about in just a second, but that is the gist of doing an amp design, uh, or the power transformer design, I should say. 
you may also be adding things like relays or other th you know devices all of the devices will have a data sheet that def defines how much current they need it's the same thing add them all up make sure you have a sum give yourself 20 percent breathing room and then that's what that needs now you may need a separate winding to cover that for specific things like relays at 12 volts or something or you could use the the heaters but you'd have to make sure that the heaters have extra room and then run that through a voltage regulator or some other thing that gets into some of the complexities of more solid state work but they still have current ratings that you can make sure that you fit so uh, hopefully that makes sense there's one other consideration now that I wanted to talk about as well is rectification the other part people are trying to figure out is what voltage range they want well the design itself is is part of the complicated part remember we if you've seen the previous video you kind of have to choose what voltage rating you want to operate based upon the design but you can stray and play with that but you do need to decide okay what voltages do i want well you'll need the maximum voltage at the power tubes before it goes down the rail and then you can use what are called dropping resistors to lower it for the other levels but you definitely need to provide that power for your power tubes in this case in this amp that you can see it's 320 and 320 ac uh, when you convert that to DC through the rectification, the rectifiers have a multiplier that adjusts them. And as I understand, generally this type, which is called a, a, a full wave rectifier, it's non-bridged. A full wave is just uh, diodes in either half of it that go and the center tap is grounded. A full wave bridge rectifier would have the center tap connecting into the actual rectifier. And you'd have that kind of typical diamond shape where you know they're set like this and you put the, your, your rectification here, ground on one side and output on the other, but you get quite a bit more output of those. Um, but in this case, I think the standard for a, a full wave rectifier like this is about 1.3 or 1.4 times. And that's what that math confirmed is that we put in a 320-320. Uh, uh, sorry, I should say 320, 0, 320, because that's what the 0 stands for, is the center tap is the 0 point uh, and is grounded. And then that puts you at 425 volts. So I did the kind of reverse math to, to check that. I took 320, 425, and I did the math of what is C11, which is this 425, divided by 320 gives me 1.3. That's about what that ended up doing for us. So that is... Um, uh, sadly, I can't give you the exact answer of what voltage you need. That's more of a different design decision based upon what tubes you're using. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the preamp tubes. We'll probably talk about power tubes later. Um, but the bigger point here is I had that. Uh, uh, that's that's a good starting point if you're choosing an amp and you don't know what to, to choose. Uh, to choose, you at least can look at these schematics and data sheets to start getting those values and figure out what range you want. So that will generally be a good way of getting it. So. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything that I missed or have done incorrectly. Please let me know if there's other topics you want to talk about. And uh, as I always have said, I would love you to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me comments. Tell me how things are going because I, I, I enjoy doing this. I, huh, I am enjoying doing this and hope that you guys are getting something useful out of it as well. So thank you very much, guys. Talk to you later.